there. How you doing? What's going on around here? How you guys doing out there? Thanks for coming back and watching this homebrew whatever you want to call it. This homebrew video here on CraigTube. Thanks a lot. I have my um, oh, my old bum sweatshirt on. Yes, it's getting colder down here. This thing is, well, it has received some attention over the years and I still wear it. It's nice and warm and you know if you get cold you can always just do that. Oh, it's all stretched out and everything and it's pretty much had the biscuit, but you know what? It was my dad's and uh, well because it was the shirt I wore in my very first homebrew video I thought 12 years later I would adorn is that the word this this sweater anyway it's nice and comfortable and sometimes it's nice to wear when you're cold so let's get on with the video um, today we're going to um, dry hop a beer I just made now if you had watched my last video <clears throat> you saw that I brewed a Severa, Severa, Sierra Nevada. I can never say that properly. Sierra Nevada Torpedo Extra IPA. Uh, I apologize for this, but unfortunately we do have a vessel that's in the way. But back here on this, this thing here, that's where we've got the Torpedo Brewing. I do have a heat belt on it because it does get quite cold down here. And I thought, well, I wouldn't mind keeping it at around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where it has been sitting so that's all right excuse me i mean you're drinking beer you're gonna burp right so uh, what we've got here is we've got some dry hops this came with the kit now if you haven't seen the video well I'll put the link for it down below so you can go and watch it and then you can come back and finish watching this what is dry hopping what is hopping you know i i always know and i'm sensitive to the fact that there are people who join the channel, and I get new subscribers every day, <clears throat> who are new to beer making. And although I've been on YouTube for 12 years or more, I've said just about everything I can tell you about brewing beer. Some of it needs to be said again because people, you know, they're new and they can't, they don't have time to go back and watch all the stuff from back then. So beer is made with malted barley and hops. Okay, hops are, hop, oh my goodness, it smells so good. Hop is a, uh, a plant, mmm, it's a flower, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful substance that grows and there's lots of different kinds of hops, but mainly um, they add a wonderful aroma and flavor to beer. If you don't add hops to beer, well, you just have fermented barley extract, really, is what you have. Um, uh, I don't, I'm not going to go into the whole history. They started ab adding hops to beers, you know, some thousand years ago to preserve the beer so it could be transported uh, long distances. Hops have a very antibacterial property to them that allow them to be kind of a natural preservative preservative if you will yeah I've had a couple of beers can't talk properly it happens cheers so well, I'll put that over there what we're doing is we're going to we've we've made the beer and we put the hops and the barley and all that stuff we did the boil you can watch the video now we're going to after one week of fermentation we're going to add more hops and this is what they call dry hopping okay what does it do it just brings forward more hop aroma and flavor. Um, it doesn't add any bitterness to the beer as what would happen if you were boiling the hops, like what you do when you make the beer. Uh, it just brings forward more, more hop flavor and aroma. And when you're making a beer like a Torpedo, which speaks to me, <laughs> I can't get over that, um, you, you have, you know, you want to add as much, you know, you want to add more hops. So I've got, um, I've got the rest of the hops here, which I'll put on the screen for you, uh, so that you can you can know exactly what the recipes on the, the video that um, I linked to down below where I made the beer. But I'll put these dry hop additions on the screen so you can see. But what do we gotta do? Okay, first of all, I love I love the smell of hops. Uh, we got a, a carboy. Um, so this is what we're gonna do is we're going to siphon the beer into a secondary. Um, there's a foam in here. That is just leftover star sand. 
doesn't hurt anything, just leave it, it's fine. Don't worry about that. And we have a sanitized um, siphon siphoning apparatus here. They've got star sand here, been splashing it and you know wiping it around all over the place so everything gets sanitized. And so we're all set to go. What do you do? Well, you get your hops. Am I gonna need a, I hope I don't spill anything here. You get your hops and you, you add it to your, to your carboy. So we're gonna do that. I'm using a different microphone today because my battery went dead on the other one, so uh, hopefully you know, the sound is all right. And it should be. Let's move that over a little bit. There we go. And then we've got other ones. So we've got uh, we've got some uh, Magnum hops and some Crystal hops and some um, Citra hops here. That is, you know, everything that's left from you know what we. Hmm. <laughs> Good stuff what we got in the beer. Actually, I'm, I think it's possible I may be adding more hops than I'm supposed to because I just realized that I think there was a little bit more hops sent with the, the kit than what was actually required. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> they'll, they'll settle out. They'll mellow out. So, whoops, I didn't go down far enough on that. Oh, I, you know, I love it. But, you know, these different type of hops have slightly different versions of the aroma. So I'm just, I don't know. I hope I'm not over hopping this beer. But we're going to put all these in. Um, I'll leave a little bit of that out just because I'm trying to follow the recipe the best I can. So there is a bunch of hops, okay, in the bottom of that. Oh boy. Now, I mean, I don't know how exciting this is going to be, guys and gals. Um, you you take the the vessel and you put it down there, down there, and then you get your you open your fermenter. I apologize. Let me see if I can make a little bit more. I don't want to stir this up because I'm going to be bottling this later. This wine, this is white wine. California white wine. It's beautiful. I love the flavor of this. It's so awesome. Um, made from a wine kit. It's so good. Uh, can you guys, yeah, so you can sort of see back here. So we're going to just have to take that off because it gets in the way. And just move it a little bit. Um, and then open it up. There we go. smell that. That's nice. So it's been fermenting for about a week and a day, eight days. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and grab our sanitized um, siphoning. Excuse my back. And we just, you, I'm sorry you can't see this. I'm putting the one end of it down into the carboy and the other end of it into the Beer. You could drink this right now. It's fermented out, but we're making a torpedo, so we could we need the extra hops. And I and you just do the siphon thing. Oh, you siphon it into the secondary. And you just let it rip. I have a piece of styrofoam here. It came from probably a television I bought 20 years ago. I don't know. And when that gets um you know, down low, I tip it back and put this under it so I can get all of it. But, you know, there probably is going to be some hop particulate se sediment in the bottom of that, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. That's how you dry hop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that uh, sit until, uh, let's see, today's Monday, so, or actually, it's, well, by now it's Tuesday, but uh, for another week. So it'll be ready next weekend and I will keg this beer, and I will have a Sierra Nevada Torpedo double IPA in the keg, five gallons of this stuff. This stuff is beautiful beer. Um, I love hoppy beers. Um, the first time I made 
a hoppy beer myself, uh, I thought I did something wrong. Um, the first time you taste a hoppy beer, sometimes you think, oh my God, you know, it's like, it's crazy. Uh, if you make it yourself, you think, what have I done wrong? But if you buy a hoppy beer and you taste it, uh, then you know, okay, yeah, this is, this is the way it's supposed to taste. <clears throat> and some people are shocked by it at first when, you, when they taste an extremely, you know, hoppy uh, beer. They're like, wow, you know, it almost tastes like a grapefruit or a little bit, you know. And, but I know, I know people who, who weren't into hoppy beers and they, they went and they tasted somebody's home brew that was a, an IPA, uh, which is a, a hoppy uh, type of, of beer. And they grew a, um, a desire for, the, for that type of beer. They, they acclimated to it. And they, they now drink this beer all the time. It's very, very nice. Uh, Sierra, Sierra Nevada Torpedo. There's lots of other ones out there. I can't, I don't, I can't even get torpedoes here. Um, and I have one in the fridge upstairs that I'm going to drink alongside this one when it's ready uh, to see what the difference is. And there will be differences, of course. So that is the torpedo story. Now, it's an easy beer to make. Um, I was given a beer kit, as you saw in the other video, but you can easily get the ingredients and make it yourself. Why not? If you like torpedo, or sorry, if you like hoppy beer, um, then you got to give this one a try. So most certainly, um, I have to give Sierra Nevada um, thumbs up for making this beer. Uh, and I think that you should always try the store-bought brand before you make the clone so that you know what it tastes like. And I certainly don't want, I don't want to take any business away from Sierra, Sierra Nevada for, you know, making this beer. This is an awesome beer that was brought to us from them. And if I could get it here, I would buy it all the time. Uh, the beer that I can get here is called Bone Shaker. I forget the name of the company. I don't have a can here with me. But I did a comparison a while ago between the two beers. I'll put a link to that down below. And I couldn't, I honestly, I, I couldn't taste the difference. Really, I mean, there was such little difference between the two beers that to me, it almost could be like a difference between one batch and another batch of the same recipe. That was how much difference there was in that. So if I want to taste a torpedo-like beer, I go and get myself a, a bone shaker. So that's that. All right, so what do we got down here? Okay, it's about halfway. Uh, let's remove the heat belt out of there. What am I drinking? I know somebody asked that. This is a, what is this? <laughs> um, uh, Cooper's Australian Pale Ale. Is it what it is? I think it is. I don't label stuff anymore. I just, you know, I, I think I'm going to remember it, but then I don't. Um, but I think that's what it is. It's a good beer. Cheers. That's nice. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a nice beer. Nothing wrong with that at all. You know, you brew it at the right temperature with, uh, with sanitized equipment, and you've got a good tasting beer. I don't work for Coopers. I don't have anything to do with them. Don't care. But I do use the products and I do stand by them. I think they make good stuff. Their malt extract is, is always nice and fresh and I think that it's uh, good to work with. So what else? Let's see what we've got back here. See now it gets to the point where now I can grab my little styrofoam and you can just tip this back and that way well, I can see what's going through the tube. That's okay. It's got another week before it's going to be kegged anyway, so it has time to settle out. And um, now you can use, um, you know, dried leaf hops, you know, whole hops, or you can use, you know, what I just did, the pellet hops. doesn't matter. You just, you know, you throw them in there and you rack on, you siphon on top of them. They're going to add 
you know, lots of top end flavor to the beer. Um, and you know, you're going to get a nice hoppy beer. Anyway, uh, that's about all that's really going on down here these days. I do have the new electronic drums in case you haven't, if you watched my last video, you see me sort of messing around on them a little bit. Really nice instrument. Um, awesome. Feels like real drums. Sounds a lot like real drums. And I can practice any time of the day or night and nobody gets woken up. So that's nice because all you hear is like the actual sound comes out of the headphones or the, you know, speaker if you have it turned up. But uh, it's, it's a nice way to practice. And I've been playing the drums since I was eight. And I quit for a lot of years because I didn't have room or I didn't have this way to to use acoustic drums because I lived in apartments and stuff so I you know I wasn't able to do it but uh, finally got those and you know, I'm having a lot of fun with them so if you want to see more of me playing those you can always join my live broadcast on Friday night on vonlive.tv slash craigtube Friday night at 10 p.m. Eastern I don't know how time zones work around the world but 10 p.m. Eastern Ontario Toronto time. There you go. Um, starting at 10 p.m., I go for six hours and I play tunes and stuff. And we talk, we take Skype calls, and I also play those drums. So it's a lot of fun. And I hope to see you there. Also, please check out my other YouTube channel. It's called Vinyl TV, and I will put a link to that down below as well. If you're not into vinyl records, well, you can still go and check it out anyway and subscribe if you don't mind. I would like that. Thank you. All right, I think we're almost done with this. Let's see where we are here. Uh, oh, the beer smells awesome. After this is done, I'm going to bring the carboy up onto the bench. Move that over there. And I'll, um, that hair was out of place the last video too. That was bothering me. <laughs> Jeez. And I'll, um, I'll let it sit here for another week and then I'll uh, siphon it into a keg and carbonate it and then we'll do a taste test between that one and the store-bought version of it. Okay, so I'm just waiting. There we go. As soon as it starts to go a little bit cloudy in the tube there, we, uh, we pull it. Oh, I got a little bit of star sand foam there. Okay, I'm going to get this hose out of here. I'm going to, um, I always do this. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. I've missed it. Usually there's a little bit of beer left in the tube, but I can sort of, mmm, I can sort of taste it. So, all right, so there we've got our, uh, our siphoned beer, and we're going to lift this up onto, just going to roll it over here a little bit, lift it up onto the bench. This isn't all that easy for a 52-year-old man. Let me... I'm, in fact, I'm almost 53. Oh, God. Okay. Here we go. So, there we go. And all we have to do now... Look at that. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Is there a thermometer on this one? I think I'm just going to leave it without a heat belt now. It can, it can sit. And I think the instructions say somewhere along the line uh, maybe three or four days from now, you're supposed to go like this. The hops are going to help this beer uh, stay sanitary. Uh-oh. That's the wrong... The wrong bong! That's okay. We get, get it in there. There, there we go. A little bit too big, but that's... That's all right. And I then I use this little... Uh, comes with the medicine, you know, the little cup. And you just put your water in there. Snap that on. And for the next one. All right, good grief. <laughs> for, the, for the next week, this is going to be hopified. And then it will be a torpedo. And I love torpedo beers. And thank you to our good friend, who on Von Live and our good caster and then chatter who brought this beer to our attention. Um, the torpedo speaks to me, is what the 
like saying how the saying goes. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, thumb up, comment, click the bell so you get notified, ding -ling -ling, when I post a new video. And there are new videos coming up very soon. Okay? Be safe. Keep brewing that beer. Thank you. Cheers. 17.